Stand by for action. We are about to launch Stingray. Anything can happen in the next half hour. gave you some idea of the excitement created earlier today by the presentation made to Captain Troy Tempest, Aquanaut of the Year. Tonight at Marineville, Captain Troy Tempest threw a party to celebrate. And boy, what a party that must have been. sleep. Be sure you're up early. Surprise, surprise, Atlanta. Oh, no. Do I have to say it again? Just coffee. Why we had to get up at this unearthly hour, I'll never know. Do I have to say it again, Father? The TV company made a special point of getting me to make sure we were all up early. Well, what are they going to do? I don't know. Maybe they want to talk about making a documentary on Marineville or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Switch on the TV anyway. Let's see the news. Boy, what a mess. Who can that be? Sure hope it's Atlanta. I could do with some help. Maybe she'll tell me why I had to get up in the middle of the night. Surprise, surprise. Huh. Captain Troy Tempest of the World Aquanaut Security Patrol, this is your life. And viewers, the program has been one of the most carefully guarded secrets of all time. You can say that again. And now if, uh, if we can come in, uh, <laughs> Troy... We can start the show. Come in? Well, it, it's it's kind of difficult. Uh, there, there was a, a, a party and... Boy, what a mess. So that's what they're up to. Oh, isn't it wonderful? Troy on television. Well, it may be wonderful to you, but I don't think Troy's enjoying it one bit. Oh, no. The place is in such a mess. I'd, I'd better get over there. We are now going to show to you, the viewers... Some of the daring exploits of Captain Troy Tempest that led to Troy being selected Aquanaut of the Year. Perhaps one of his most startling adventures began when he was investigating a report that missiles that were being fired at Marineville originated from the area of Ball Island. Hey, Troy, a cave mouth. Yeah. 
It could lead us to the base of the volcano. Let's take a look. Stingray surfaced in a cavern near the base of the volcano. But what Troy didn't realize was that he was walking straight into a trap. Welcome to our base, Captain Tempest. You are beneath the island of Baal. Who are you? What do you want with us? All you need to know is that we are going to destroy Marineville, and you are going to help us. You're crazy. I'll never do that. Ah, but you will, Tempest. <laughs> Release her. Do you hear me? Release her. Shut up and listen, Tempest. I want to know on what frequencies Marineville's interceptors work. I get it. You'll jam the interceptors so your rockets can get through and destroy Marineville. Very smart, Troy Tempest. Now give me the information or Marina will suffer. No deal, fella. It's three lives against thousands. Very well. Chidora. The voltage. Still would have used to cooperate. Very well. Full power, the fatal dose. Okay, shut it up. I'll talk. So Troy had saved Marina's life. But now, somehow, he had to save Marineville. That night, he broke out of jail and started to disarm the next rocket that was due to be fired the following morning. The mighty rocket was launched on schedule. Destination, Marineville. Marineville defenses were now powerless to stop it. But Troy's work prevented the rocket doing any serious damage. A note, concealed in the nose cone, was delivered to command ashore, giving him all the information he required. A Marineville strike force was immediately dispatched to attack the enemy base. Terranian aircraft, we surrender! We surrender! Stop the attack! We surrender! But Troy's work was not yet complete. Okay, phones. All missiles read 007. 007. Sure was a great adventure, Troy. Uh, tell us, uh, what do you consider to be your, well, most difficult experience to date? 
without question, appearing on this program. <laughs> well, Troy, I, I'm going to make it even more difficult. Because I'm going to ask you to tell the viewers in your own words about your most unusual experience. Most unusual? Mm-hmm. Well, uh, most of the things that happened to us and the wasps are unusual. But I remember one particular experience that was strange... Strange because it didn't really happen. Yet it was so real at the time. I was sent to investigate a report that a jeweled forest had been found at the bottom of the ocean, near to the Petroma Trench. While I was searching, the seabed collapsed, and I fell into a deep underwater cavern. I was hurt and could hardly move, and I could feel myself passing out. I guess my airline was fractured. I thought I was dying. Phones, I'm suffocating. Can't breathe. My head, it, it aches. I'm finished. Suffocating. Gotta get air. Gotta get air. then, it happened. I was able to breathe again, even without my mask. I felt just great. Gee, I've never seen plants like this. They're beautiful. I don't believe it, but it's there. The Forest of Gems! <laughs> Say, these leaves, they're made of gold and silver, diamonds, rubies, emeralds. Yippee! I must be the richest man in the world! I'm the richest man in the whole wide world! Great one, do you require anything? Yeah. Guess you can peel me another grape. Marina, play something sweet and gentle. I couldn't really understand what had happened. But in a situation like this, I didn't really care. It's great being the richest man in the world. All my riches! Marina! 
Atlanta. We're doomed. Take it easy, Troy. Relax. Phones. Where, where am I? The palace is crashing down. But this is Stingray. How did I get here? What happened? You had a touch of raptures of the deep, Troy. What? What are you talking about? Well, it's true, Troy. I guess they'd fall into the crevasse, and then your air tank giving out sent you into a kind of drunkenness. Yeah. I've heard of it. Raptures of the deep, eh? When I realized what had happened, I could hardly believe it. Thanks, Troy. That was just great. And now, viewers, uh, while Troy was telling that story, uh, phones his hydrophone operator, and Marina, the beautiful girl from under the sea, have arrived. So now we have the entire Stingray crew here. Oh, uh, <laughs> and of course, we mustn't forget the man who runs the whole show, uh, Commander Shore. And, of course, his lovely daughter, Atlanta. Now, uh, tell me, Atlanta, uh, is it true that there's a romance between you and Troy? Well, uh, of course, we have a lot of fun together, but I don't think Troy's the marrying type. And, anyway, the call of duty usually interrupts any romantic notions I may have. Uh, like the time when Troy, Phones, Marina and I were getting ready for a holiday together. Ah, oh, there. We finally closed it. It's a pity we couldn't have taken all we wanted, Marina, but Troy did say we were traveling light. Okay, phones, let's collect the girls and be on our way. Sure thing, Troy. Troy, will you come up to the control tower right away? It's pretty important. Okay, Commander Shaw. But a few words right from there. Father Thanks. wrecked the whole plan. You can say that again. Within the hour, we were approaching an undersea drilling base. The scientists there had found a new ocean, right below the existing ocean. And, of course, Stingray had to investigate. We had no idea what we were going to find, or what trouble we might run into. Okay, phones, let's dive. Main ballast a thousand. We're going down to slope, phones, and we're picking up speed. We're out of control, Troy. And we're still going down. Look out for those rocks! knocked unconscious in the crash. And to this day, I don't know how long it was before we came around. Oh, well, what hit us? I don't know, but it had the effect of a hurricane or a tidal wave. Stingray seems to be okay, though. Let's try the motors. The water's gone. We're beached on the ocean bed. But how, Troy? There were thousands of feet of water above us. Not now, so let's get out and take a look. I don't get this. One moment this is an ocean, and then it becomes a desert. Look at those rocks. They're red hot. Yeah. My feet are sizzling. Say, we must be close to the center of the earth. What's wrong, Marina? Phone, she wants us to listen to something. Wait. I hear it now. That roaring sound again. Phones, the water's coming back. Come on. Back to Stingray and fast. Run, Phones. Marina, run.
her steady phones. We've got to keep her on an even keel. We had lost our position due to the crash. And now, somehow, we had to find our way up. Phones was taking continuous soundings in the hope that we might find the shaft. Toy, we are there. It's an opening. It was an opening, all right. Right in the center of a beautiful blue lagoon. It looked as if we were going to have our holiday after all. Without Atlanta, of course. Hold it. I don't believe it. I just don't believe it. What does the card say, Atlanta? Wish you were here. All my love, Troy. Isn't that just my luck? You see what I mean? Yes, Atlanta. I do. I guess that Troy really belongs to us all. And I would like to thank him for allowing us to share these magic moments. Troy Tempest, Aquanaut of the Year, this is your life. Well, thank you. To me, this will always be a great moment. Just one thing I'd like to say, you, you asked Atlanta if there was a romance between us. Well, I think the moment is right for me to say that there... Say! Hey, there, that's battle stations. Unidentified craft in Marineville approaches. Captain Troy Tampas to report the tower immediately. Well, I guess Atlanta's right. There's no time for romance. So long. Atlanta, I'm going to the tower. I want you there in five minutes. Phones, mariners, stand by with Troy to launch Stingray. Uh, thanks for a great show, but I'm afraid whether you like it or not, this has got to be the end. <laughs> Start whenever you're near. Marina, Aqua Marina, why can't you whisper the words that my heart is longing to hear? Your magic to me, a beautiful mystery. I'm certain to fall, I know, because you enthrall me so, Marina, Aqua Marina, why don't you say that you'll always stay close to my heart? 